Welcome to Whispers and Bricks. My name is Ari Sherman. I'm your host. My guest today is John Tarnoff. John is an executive and career transition coach, speaker, and author who supports mid and late career professionals in defining, planning, and achieving more meaningful and sustainable careers. I think I need this guy. Fired 39% of the time during his 35 years as a film producer. Wow. Studio executive and tech entrepreneur, he learned how to turn setbacks into successes in a volatile business. He reinvented his own career at the age of 50, earning a master's degree in spiritual psychology to share his career lessons with others going through similar challenges. Since leaving entertainment in 2010, John has coached individuals, groups, and led career workshops for university alumni, including for UCLA, Cornell, Carnegie Mellon. Corporate coaching clients have included Bank of America, Bridgewater Associates, Levi Strauss, SoftBank, TD, Ameritrade, and Thrive Global. He's the author of the best-selling Boomer Reinvention, How to Create Your Dream Career Over 50, and has created four courses on the multi-generational workforce for LinkedIn Learning. Please help me welcome John Tarnoff. John, how are you? I'm doing great, Ari. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. What's it? You're out where? You're in uh, California? I am in Los Angeles, yeah. City of Angels. City of Angels, Los Angeles. Yes, yeah, City of, that's true. That's true. Okay, great. Well, as you know, the name of this podcast is Whispers and Bricks. The whispers are those voices telling you what the right thing to do is, and they represent the good in life. The bricks represent the bad things that we go through in life. Now, we all know that life is not a straight line. There are many ups and downs and many bumps in the road. People get hit with bricks all the time. The issue is trying to listen to the whispers before those bricks actually come or listening to the whispers after the bricks come. Now, let me begin by asking you this. You spent 35 years in film production. I don't know if we're supposed to, if we're supposed to deduct the 39% of the time that you were fired, but let's not go there right now. I, I kept working. I was fired, but I... Got right back up and kept on going. There you go. Well, you know what? I'm sure many people in my audience would be very envious of your career. Let me ask you this. How did you break into film production? What, what was that career like? It sure. must have been like really, really exciting. No? It, you know, it, it is, it's, it's very tale of two cities. It's the best of careers. It's the worst of careers. You know, you're working with some really talented, smart uh, exciting, thought-provoking people uh, creating something out of nothing, right? Uh, you're working on large-scale, collaborative, industrial-sized projects. Uh, there is something very empowering and exhilarating about being in film production or TV production when it's working. The problem with the industry is that it's very hard to have a straight line with it. It's a very unpredictable world. You're trying to second guess the future taste of the American or the global public and what they're going to want to watch. And, and there's a great line from the amazing and talented screenwriter, the late William Goldman, who prefaced his book called Adventures in the Screen Trade, which was his memoir, with the line, the first rule of Hollywood is no one knows anything. <laughs> and it's true because everyone's got an opinion, but no one really knows. So wow. you're, you're trying to kind of navigate in this very uncertain environment. Look, entertainment attracts very talented, wonderful people. It also attracts some schmucks and, <laughs> and people who are in it for the greed, for the power, for the glamour. Uh, so, you know, you're trying to kind of wade through the muck a lot of the time to find the gold. And it can be exhausting to do that. Um, uh, myself, from my own curiosity, <clears throat> Um, you were, I, I guess, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, hobnobbing with the, with the stars. Um, you know, there's very little actual hobnobbing. Hob, you know, you, you kind of are fed a diet of it on TV. 
because you're watching all of the you know the the awards shows or the, you're, you watch Entertainment Tonight or whatever. But you know most most people just kind of have their normal lives and they'll go out to restaurants and the paparazzi shots of stars walking around uh, going to the market is. It, it, that's probably a better representation of what life is really like. It's just kind of life. Wow. And when you go to work, you work really hard. And it's not glamorous at all. Being on a film set is probably the least glamorous thing that you can imagine where you're working long hours, six days a week with very little sleep, uh, shooting uh, on strange schedules uh, in strange locations. And it's strenuous work. You're either you know very you know into it and getting the scene done, or you're waiting around, or you're moving from one location to another. It's grueling. Wow. So let me ask you this: um, you were uh, you, as you said, you were fired thirty nine percent of the time that you were working there. What yeah. were, what were, what were like what was some of the bricks that you got hit with along the way? What was sure. you know. So, so the reason I talk about this 39% thing, and by the way, this, this came to me as I was preparing for a TEDx talk, which I did in 2012, which kind of launched me on this particular direction that I've been going on now for the last 10 years uh, as, a, as a career coach. And I was trying to figure out, so what qualifies me to be up here talking about career transition and career reinvention, which was the topic of the talk. And I kind of did my little calculation. I kind of listed all the jobs that I'd had and what happened at the end of that job. And so six of the jobs of the, the 18 jobs I had over the 35 years, uh, six of them I left because uh, I went on to another job, got another offer. Five of them were things that just ended. So films that I had produced that were done, consulting deals that were done, no harm, no foul. But then there were seven jobs where I was fired. And so I just did the math and that came up to 39%. And I thought that's a funny statistic because who talks about the, 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 the percentage of time in your career that you got fired? No one wants to talk about that. Right. You know, my mother used to say to me, why are you having such a hard time holding a job? <laughs> <laughs> right. Jewish mother. Oh, uh, Lord. And, and the, the, the truth of it is it's a volatile business and I, I wasn't fired necessarily because I was doing a bad job, but you know, I was working in a studio, the studio had changed. The new guy came in, swept clean, want his own people in, uh, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of reasons. And in some cases, sure. I clashed, you know, with, uh, with the, the people, uh, the person I was working with, or it just kind of wasn't working out. Uh, and, uh, you know, and the last job I had was a really interesting was a really interesting story. I was working at DreamWorks Animation for most of the 2000s, doing really people work, not really production work. And they were changing directions after the after the uh, the uh, 2008 recession. The company decided it was going to change in a different direction. That they had you know different agendas in terms of their finances and how they were going to be profitable, etc. And a lot of the initiatives that I was working on were kind of they, they were done. So I actually went, I initiated this. I went to the COO who I reported to and I said, look, this is a strange conversation to be having, but is there anything left for me to do around here? <laughs> and she was kind of taken aback and she was, she kind of turned bright red and she said, look, I, look, I have to preface this by saying you've been great. You know, you, you, you kind of took this department and kind of created this amazing thing with our, with our staff and all that and the programs that you've done. She said, but I have to be frank with you, the way we're going, I don't think so. And she said, look, why don't you, I mean, everyone loves you here. Go around, see if there's something that, that makes sense for you to do, that makes sense for someone else, some, some other project you can get involved in, department, initiative, and let's see if we can keep you on. And I did that and, and there really wasn't anything. I really wanted to pursue this kind of education, uh, uh, staff development kind of role that I had taken on when I was there. So I came back to her, I said, you know, I think I gotta go. And we negotiated this exit. It was very friendly, which is kind of unusual for Hollywood where there's so many tempers and, and, mm. uh, and, and, and stuff goes on, fights break out. Um, so, you know, it's all over the map as to why, why I left these jobs. 
But the point of it is talking about the 39% to kind of bring it back to this is that it, getting fired is not fatal, right? You're going to recover from it. And the point of 